Hello, Wagwan. Welcome to Design to Win. I'm your host, C. Ruth Taylor, and this is a program where we give you the roadmap to win at life with a little Caribbean flavor. Coming up in today's show is another interesting author interview. And today I'm going to be having Patricia Reed War. She's the author of the book, Retirement and New Adventure, and she is living the retirement dream. So she's going to teach us how to win in retirement. So stay tuned. Patricia is the author of the book, Retirement, A New Adventure, which is full of ideas about how to have an active and fulfilling retirement. She has delivered presentations to hundreds of pre-retirees at retirement seminars and workshops put on by corporations and other organizations. She's leading by example. She took up the challenge of learning to play the violin and the steel pan well into her 60s and learning to swim at 70. Wow, I still can't swim. So there is so much you can do in retirement. Patricia was also awarded gold and silver medals for her entries in national speech and creative writing competitions at the respective ages of 68 and 70. And today it is our pleasure to have her on the show. Lady Pat, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Ruth. Good morning. <laughs> and good evening, wherever you are, when you are listening to this. <laughs> oh, no, oh, Lady maybe, Pat. Maybe I should say good day then. I tell you, good day because of the different time zone. I am so proud of you. You are living the retirement dream. But just before you get into the book and how we can win in retirement, tell me what is your favorite thing about Jamaica and in your retirement adventure, which is the most exciting place you've been to? Oh, well, uh, the my favorite thing about Jamaica is really the people. Uh, the, the fun and the, the personality of the people. W one of the things when I was overseas, you can't just um, pop up at people's homes, you know, your family and your friends. You, you have to call before and you have to, you know, let them know you're coming tomorrow and what time you're coming. In Jamaica, you, you, you just check on your friends when you're ready to, to see them. If you're passing through you in the neighborhood, you call to find out if they are there and they're happy to see you. So I, I love that about Jamaica. It's a more relaxed, uh, relaxed, you know, environment. And when it comes on to family and friends, it's, it's much more relaxed than, than being overseas. And, um, oh boy. I would say that my most favorite adventure is really when I go to the music shows, like when I go to the jazz and blues uh, jazz festival, and when I go to some fest, I, I just love those music shows. So, so that for me uh, is my favorite adventure. And I really am um, with this pandemic going around now and all those shows being being um, being cut, it it has been it has been traumatic. Wow. So just listening to you, I can see you're an extrovert. I don't like when people just pop up <laughs> at my house, even though I'm Jamaican, I prefer when they call. <laughs> But that is so fascinating. And you like going to some fest. Oh my goodness, I've never been there. <laughs> That's good. So tell us about this book that you've written, Retirement, A New Adventure. How did it come about? It came about in a very strange way. I, I, I was actually writing somewhat of a memoir and I saw a publishing course being advertised, a two-day publishing course. I went to the course and the, the instructor asked, if you were to write a book today, what would it be about? So I just said retirement. I just put the topic retirement. And then he had us flesh out chapters and so on during the course of the two-day uh, seminar. I put down that and went on with my life. About a month later, 
I, I bounced upon the notes from that seminar and I just I started looking through it and I said, you know something, I should really write this book. And that, that is exactly how it came about. And I, I just wrote the book because, I, because of my vast experience and my multicultural experience, I, I was able to pull on a lot of things I had done over, over my, my life. And, and pull it into, into this book. So the book really is about uh, en just enjoying retirement, staying active, not, not going into a slump, but staying active and engaged and enriched. So I talk about um, travel, for instance, uh, you know, all the, the elements of, of travel and uh, I give tips, you know, on some of the some of the, the the things that I've learned about travel, like you know, low budget, low budget fares, and and all that. And uh, then there's another chapter about um, unleashing the maestro in you, where where I talk about people who are are able to go and learn a musical instrument, and I give my own uh, example of learning to play the violin well into my 60s and you know and uh well it was written before i started uh, learning to play the steel pan but the violin violin example is is there and it really shows you that the things that you wanted to do all your life you can now do it and um i talk about hobbies also because when it comes on to income generation in your retirement years, your hobbies, your passions, the things that you, you used to do for fun uh, in your early years can come and, and be an income generating activity for you in retirement. And then we uh, there's a chapter on volunteering and mentoring, which is something that's very dear to my heart because I believe that after you have lived this long, and you have acquired this much knowledge and wisdom and skills and so on, it is very important for you to um, take a little time out and um, impart what you have, give what you have, share what you, what you have um, gained with, with others, with youngsters, and also you know, in areas of volunteerism. And then I talk about the internet, my, my favorite uh, my favorite place. I, I know that's not a normal place for a 72 year old, but the internet can do so much for us. And, you know, we can meet, we can tweet, we can um, connect, we can, and I'm now connecting with people I used to go to Sunday school with when, when, when I was, was a, little, a little child. And it, it, it is just, um, it is just, and, and all the new friends that we're also, we're also finding people of like mind. And we can go into groups and, uh, you know, join these groups that are of, uh, of specific interest to us. So that is also another, another experience that I talk about in the book. And then the last chapter is entitled, Tell Your Story. And I am trying to, to get people all over the world, retirees all over the world to recognize that each of us has a story to tell. So uh, that chapter, you know, encourages you to tell your story. And it doesn't mean you don't have to write a book. You can do an audio blog. You can do a video blog. You can you get, your, get the young members of your family to, to assist you. Tell them you have something to say or you want to say it. And they will, they will assist you in, in, in getting it done. So uh, that, that in a sense is a book. And, you know, everybody loves the book. They, they think it's an easy read. That is it, the normal normal arm comment that that people make and that it is very interesting somebody actually um somebody spoke to me recently and said he does not know he does not understand how i was able to get so much in this relatively relatively small book because the book is just 96 pages and he said he just can't understand how i i packed so much in there <laughs> I love that you've said so many things. I've read books 
um, the book, folks, and I got my mom a copy. She's like three years away from official retirement, but she's not planning to retire. She has a whole <laughs> lot of things to do outside of the formal working system. My favorite chapter is also that one on Tell Your Stories. And I got so many ideas in reading it about the audio blog and just the importance of passing on your story to the next generation. And out of that in a lady part, as I read your book, I it inspired me so much. I am not in at the retirement age. I'm 40 years old. But when I read the book, what struck me is that I don't need to wait until retirement to do some of these things. And so one of the things that the book helped me to do is that I went to St. Mary during the Christmas season and I took some of my mentees on a trip back to my family home. And my grandmother is like 85, 85 or 86. I don't <laughs> remember um, fully. I think it's, yeah, she's going to be 86 this year. And she started telling them stories. And you should see the young people just sat down and they were taking it in. And we were exploring the land and learning what certain um, uh, plants can do. And they were just, their parents as well, because I took the parents, they were just so enraptured by what she was saying. And then I said, you know what, I have to go back again. And so we went back Boxing Day. And this time I took out my phone and I said, Grandmother, you have to tell us the, our story. Where did we come from? Why did you move here? And I recorded all of that goodness. And it was your book that I read that inspired me and, and, and put a level of focus to that trip. So I want to thank you for that. That was, uh, I mean, I want to encourage everybody to go get that book. You can find it online, you can find it on Amazon, wherever. It is such a good book. So for somebody at my age, how do we prepare for retirement? from no guide us in that process well one of the things that uh, and first of all let me just say thank you for um for highlighting that because there is that section in the book that says um that going back to your roots and i think that is what what inspired you there and it is something that we all should do we all should go back to our roots, go, go, go find out where we came from. And I, I think I um, outlined a story in there of a gentleman who, um, a family member of mine, who went back to his roots. And that was a fascinating story. So I guess that is what, um, that is what sent you to St. Mary. So I'm, I'm happy, happy for that. Uh, in terms of preparing for retirement, I would say, uh, one of the things you have to do, first of all, before you even, you even start anything else, you have to get your mind ready. Mindset is, is important. Um, there are a lot of people who don't uh, prepare themselves. And when it comes on, on, on to them, you, you know, they, they just don't know how to, how to handle it. Um, I, th there was an instance of a lady who uh, retired and uh, every morning she was going to uh, her office, driving to her office into the parking lot and sitting down in the parking lot there uh, in her car because she, she just couldn't, um, she, she didn't know what to do with herself. So the first thing you have to do is you have to prepare your mindset, understand that there is going to come a day when this thing that you have, this thing that you are doing is going to be over, right? In the form in which you, you are doing it. And the, you know, the people who you are engaging, whether it is customers, um, co-workers, clients, and, and all that, there is going to come a day when your engagement is going to have to be different. So if you notice, uh, when you read my book, you would have seen that there were a, a lot of things in it that led up from long before I retired. 
So for instance, I was doing music before I, I retired. I've been doing music since I've been a child. And the, um, so doing the violin and learning to play the violin now as a new instrument is really an extension of, of, of my musical, musical um, you know, experience. So one of the things you have to do is as, as a 40 year old, is start looking at the things that you are doing. Start looking at your passions, your hobbies and all that and say to yourself, what do I want to do when I retire? And when you look at those things, you are going to find out that you may have to do some lessons to enhance, to enhance what, what, what you know, your skills or, or, or your, you know, your capabilities in, in whatever area. Uh, there was a lady who I, I counseled, um, at, well, at a retirement seminar afterwards we, we spoke. And she said that she used to play the violin when she was a child. She still had a violin, the violin, new brand, um, in good condition, but she had not, you know, she had gone to college, got married, had children, and the violin was just sitting in a closet. And I said to her, pull out that violin, go and, um, and register in, in my violin school. Now that you are working and you have money that you can pay for the violin lessons, your children are all, you know, out, out of um, college. So you can now pay for the violin lessons and you go and do that. Bring your violin skills back up to um, a respectable, uh, you know, respectable condition, right? Um, or competency. And then when you actually retire four, four years from now, you are actually able to teach children in your in your your community in your neighborhood how to play the violin. There is your your post retirement um post retirement money coming in um to supplement your pension, giving violin lessons. So while you are actually working, what you you are going to have to do is look at what you what you're doing. Look at what you want to enhance the skills you want to enhance the things that you would want to do in retirement, and um you know use the funds your 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 income as you have it now, um and you you enhance your skills and capabilities or if it is um if it is something that you have to acquire, if it is something you have to purchase. Um, you know, you, you purchase it now and you, you start paying for it. You might have to pay for it um, on, on, um, on higher perks or so on. But while you're actually working, then, then you're going to do that kind of a thing. So, so that is how you plan for, you plan for, for, for 20, 25 years down the road at, at, at 40. And, and of course, another thing is, I want you to take care of your health because if you do not take care of your health when you get to retirement you are going to have a miserable time because you're going to be suffering from so many um so many many you know illnesses um lifestyle illnesses non-communicable diseases, the diabetes, the hypertension, you have kidney issues and all, all that sort of a thing. If you don't take care of your health at 40 years old, and then what will happen is that the little pension you are getting and the little money that you, that you may, may get from your hobbies, going to be going into medication and, and um, seeing specialists and, and, and all of that. So, these are the things that you, you need to do. You need to start um, at 40, you need to start thinking about that, that 25 year old plan. And of course, um, it goes without saying that you have to put together a, a good financial, financial um, plan in place so that um, when you get to retirement, you, you will have a reasonable, reasonable financial financing in place because um, that, is, that is what I, I did not do. And, uh, and so, you know, I had to kind of play catch up. 
because it's it's it, it's it's amazing when you are working and you are at 40 years old money is coming in and going out and you don't even think about it when you get to 65 68 years old for some strange reason the money just seemed to just come out of your hands so quickly and you you know you you have a hundred thousand dollars today and tomorrow it's gone uh, one doctor, one doctor, you know, uh, one procedure, one test is $50,000 out of that hundred. So you have to put your financial plan in place. And of course, um, it goes without saying you have to have your health insurance because as you age, you are going to, to have the normal, normal aging issues. So you have to have your health insurance in place. And now is the time for you to put your health insurance in place while, while you're young, not um, when you get to my age, because when you get to my age and you have all the pre-existing conditions, nobody wants to insure you anymore. Wow, those are some solid tips. But I'm so really proud of you. I'm looking at this thing where it says, you recently launched a newsletter. There are many persons even in their 60s, 50s, who are still technology averse. I mean, COVID now has forced us to move from analog to digital. So people are getting more persons now have to deal with it. And many are complaining. I heard some complaints very recently. But you at your age, you said at 72, I'm looking here that is said that you recently built a website and that you, your command of the digital space has not gone unnoticed. So you were nominated as one of the finalists in the digital Jamaica people to watch in 2021 by, digital, by the Digital Disruption Agency. You are an amazing lady. <laughs> But Thank you. Ruth. I, I want to encourage you as long as God gives you breath to continue. So one final thing before we end the interview, apart from not preparing financially, what has been the most difficult part of retirement apart from that area? Is there any other difficulty that you, you have had that you think that we need to pay attention to, pay heed to before we get there, if we get there? Well, that I, I mentioned it, I talked about the health situation and the health insurance because I actually, um, I, I've had six major surgeries in my life and when i say major i mean major um a lot of my my organs or parts of them are are, are not there anymore and uh, uh when what i did foolishly i terminated my health insurance um several years ago not re recognizing that you know uh, i would have needed it at this stage and i was kind of pennywise pound foolish and um, when I came back to Jamaica in 2011, 2011, uh, nobody would insure me because I, I, had, I had had so many um, surgeries and, you know, so, so many problems. I was having kidney issues, diabetes and hypertension and all those, you know, lovely things. And nobody would insure me. So that that was a problem and having to, to spend uh out of pocket for 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 your your medical um medical you know bills is 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 awful because you you have to do all these tests um you have to do periodic um a whole battery of blood tests um periodically uh every so many months and you know they they, they knock not the socks out of out of you and um, it, it really, that, so that I would say, the, it has been, been my greatest difficulty. But thankfully, the CCRP, uh, Gallagher Insurance Brokers and the CCRP came up with a policy uh, in, at the end of uh, 2019, where um, a policy for people 50 years and over uh, in Jamaica here, 
and they had a three month period, which was an open in, in, um, enrollment period where you didn't have to declare anything. So I just dived in there and got in. So I'm now on that, that, that policy and it has made a considerable difference. And I make sure that my premiums, um, I pay my premiums on time and that, you know, they're, they, they're, um, accounted for. So, yes. Wow. You are truly speaking to me. And as we, as you spoke earlier about vulnerability, because I too have terminated mine. And so I am here thinking, wow, this is something I really need to go back and reinvest in because I'm self-employed. And, you know, when you, when you start on this journey, it's just about essentialism. I don't even call it minimalism, essentialism, but packed in that, needs to be my um, health insurance. And there was a time when I was almost blacklisted too because I've had two lung collapses before and they didn't want to insure me. But thank God for companies like Gallagher and I pray that others will come on board. So where can we find out more about you and how we can learn more about retirement? Because I'm sure after this episode, my listeners are going to want to stay in touch with you. Where can we find out more about you and get more information on retiring right? <laughs> well, I'm on Instagram, P. Reed Wall. P-R-E-I-D-W-A-U-G-H. I am on Facebook, uh, Patricia.ReadWar. Um, I am on LinkedIn. Uh, same, you know, if you just put in my name, Patricia Readwar, uh, then you, you, can, you can find me. And anybody who wants to get in touch with me can actually send me a DM. And, um, you know, just send me a direct message or a message to my inbox and, um, and, and I, I will connect, connect with you. Wow. This has been so good, chock full of goodness, um, tips to help us to win in retirement. And we want to thank you so much for coming. And as we close out the show, let's say our pledge to win. Put your hand over your heart and let's say together, there's greatness in me. It's possible to live my dreams, no matter how bad it is or how bad it gets. I'm going to make it with faith, courage, and consistent action. I'm going to make it. It's not over until I win. Tough for now, until next time. <laughs>